Elon Musk has just made a shocking decision that may not only save the Crew Dragon from disaster, but also end up benefiting the entire space industry. The billionaire has recently bought a new company that will help SpaceX manufacture one of the most critical components of any orbital transport, parachutes. Let's take a closer look at this shocking decision and how it will benefit SpaceX in the long run. SpaceX is making significant strides toward establishing itself as a leading aerospace contractor with a comprehensive approach to vertical integration. Until recently, SpaceX had been outsourcing the production of parachutes. However, in a noteworthy move, the company discreetly acquired Pioneer Aerospace after its parent company faced insolvency. This unusual maneuver involved SpaceX purchasing one of its vendors for $2.2 million following the parachute manufacturer's filing for Chapter 11 earlier this month. The parent company of Pioneer Aerospace, known as Aviation Safety Resources, ASR, sought Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in Florida's Middle District on November 1st. It's important to note that ASR had taken control of Pioneer Aerospace from Saffron Electronics and Defense in June of 2022. This strategic acquisition by SpaceX marks a step towards consolidating its capabilities and enhancing its self-sufficiency in the aerospace industry. Pioneer, based in Connecticut, has been at the forefront of parachute design for space and diverse applications for several decades. Its extensive portfolio spans parafoils crafted in the 1960s for potential use in Gemini spacecraft, parachutes utilized in Mars lander missions, and the OSIRIS-REx sample return capsule. Moreover, Pioneer Aerospace has been a key supplier of drogue chutes for SpaceX's Crew Dragon and its cargo variant. On November 9th, Pioneer Aerospace took a significant step by submitting an asset purchase agreement to the bankruptcy court. This document outlined SpaceX's acquisition of the majority of Pioneer's assets for $2.2 million. This encompassed intellectual property associated with drag chutes and drogue chutes. The approval for the sale was granted by the bankruptcy court on November 22nd, highlighting SpaceX's swift action. This prompt response aligns with SpaceX's longstanding commitment to in-house production, a principle maintained since its inception. This strategic approach aims to minimize reliance on external suppliers. When subcontractors are involved, it underscores the exceptional importance of the component in question. SpaceX has consistently pursued in-house alternatives for various components, yet in the case of parachute production, it has encountered challenges. Crafting parachutes capable of withstanding extreme velocities poses a significant and ongoing challenge. Both SpaceX and Boeing, the other company with a NASA commercial crew contract, have faced hurdles in developing parachutes for their spacecraft. Even after deployment, there have been instances of parachutes exhibiting delays in opening, although without posing a safety risk. During a briefing on February 4, 2022, officials disclosed that the delayed opening of one parachute out of four on both the Crew-2 splashdown and the CRS-24 cargo mission splashdown could potentially be attributed to the aerodynamics of those specific parachute systems. However, they emphasized their commitment to a thorough examination of this phenomenon before the next Dragon missions. Steve Stitch, the manager of NASA's commercial crew program, noted that on the CRS-24 mission, a parachute opened 63 seconds after the other three, while on the Crew-2 splashdown, it opened 75 seconds later. Stitch acknowledged that instances of lagging parachute openings had been observed in earlier cargo missions, although he did not specify which ones. Bill Gerstenmeier, the vice president of Build and Flight Reliability at SpaceX, later indicated that these earlier incidents involved a different version of parachutes than the Mark III parachutes currently employed on the Dragon spacecraft. Gerstenmeier clarified that there have been no recent design or manufacturing changes that could account for the occurrence of a lagging parachute on two consecutive missions. He emphasized a comprehensive investigation into the matter, stating, this will be thoroughly investigated. The goal is to leverage this incident as an additional data point to gain deeper insights into the operational dynamics of the four-shoot system. The intent is to discern whether the observed behavior is indeed within the expected norm or if there might be underlying factors that differ from previous understanding. Parachute development turned out to be much more challenging than we initially anticipated, remarked Phil McAllister, the director of NASA's Commercial Space Flight Division, during a presentation on lessons learned from the Commercial Crew Program. He reflected on the misconception that parachutes had been mastered during the Apollo era, thinking, how difficult could it be? It, however, proved to be immensely challenging, with space being inherently tough and the creation of space parachutes significantly tougher. 
A.B. Tripathi, the director of mission operations at UC Berkeley's Space Sciences Laboratory, emphasized the daunting nature of developing space parachutes, likening it to the complexity of crafting an exceedingly intricate propulsion system. Tripathi, drawing on his experience at SpaceX as the director of Dragon missions and in-flight reliability, as well as nearly a decade at NASA as a lead aerospace systems engineer, shed light on SpaceX's practices. He provided insights into Elon Musk's decision-making regarding outsourcing, highlighting Musk's evaluation criteria, which includes supplier competence and adherence to delivery schedules. Tripathi explained that if either criterion falls short, SpaceX considers internal production and integration of the component into its product line. The intricate process of manufacturing technically advanced, low-volume products poses challenges for rapid replication, particularly within the tight timeframes essential for SpaceX Dragon certification. While SpaceX was deeply involved in engineering the drogue chutes and conducted extensive in-house testing, the complexities of manufacturing necessitated external collaborations with Pioneer and Airborne. Tripathi emphasized that the creation of parachutes is more of an art than pure science, highlighting the critical importance of exhaustive testing and a dedicated test program. In this context, a meticulous approach becomes pivotal, aiding in the comprehensive understanding of potential weaknesses within the system. Founded by Elon Musk in 2002, initially for rocket development and launches, SpaceX rapidly expanded its operations to include low Earth orbit, LEO, resupply missions in collaboration with NASA. Over time, the company diversified its services to encompass commercial crewed space flights, satellite internet provision, and satellite manufacturing. The acquisition of Pioneer Aerospace holds significance, notably because SpaceX infrequently engages in company acquisitions. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell, speaking at the Satellite 2022 conference in March 2022, highlighted that since its inception 20 years ago, SpaceX had only acquired an unnamed machine shop and Swarm Technologies. Swarm Technologies is a startup focused on developing a constellation of small satellites for Internet of Things, IoT, services. The reported $524 million acquisition of Swarm Technologies, as covered by the Wall Street Journal, was widely interpreted as SpaceX, acquiring both talent and technology. Although Swarm continues to deliver Internet of Things, IoT, services to its current customer base, it has halted the sale of new receivers. Instead, Swarm has announced its intention to serve customers in the future through direct-to-device capabilities on Starlink satellites. This strategic move presents SpaceX with the opportunity to expand into the realm of parachute systems. However, it remains to be seen whether SpaceX will choose to incorporate this capability exclusively for internal use within Dragon operations. Regardless of the specific direction taken, this development signifies a monumental stride forward for SpaceX, showcasing the company's ongoing commitment to diversification and innovation within the aerospace industry. What do you think? Should SpaceX capitalize by selling components such as reliable parachutes to its peers? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.